This is the Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmoth. Good morning, I'm Justin Warmoth. Last year, an estimated one in nine Americans were food insecure. That's more than 37 million people, including 11 million children. In Central Florida, the problem is even worse, with one in six people struggling to find consistent access to food to maintain an active and healthy life. But thanks to charities like Feeding Children Everywhere, those families are getting the food they need. This morning, Dave Green, the CEO of Feeding Children Everywhere, is here to talk about the nationwide hunger issue and how the nonprofit is getting results for families. Dave, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Yeah, thanks for having me here. You guys do great work. Um, 2010 is when Feeding Children Everywhere began. Uh, You guys are based out of Longwood, right? Yeah. Uh, Talk about how the charity has transformed over the last 10 years. So the organization actually started in the aftermath of the earthquake in Haiti in Mm -hmm. 2010. And uh, after the earthquake, there were a group of people from the Sanford area who just really felt compelled to try to help in any way they could to send food there to Haiti. And Mm -hmm. really, that was the beginning of feeding children everywhere. And, you know, for the first year and a half or so, uh, really, we primarily focused on shipping food to international locations. And then for us, there was this moment where we saw a story actually about hunger and poverty right here in Central Florida. And we just knew that we had to do more, right? Mm-hmm. That we, we had to pe- help people right here in our own backyard as well. So uh, that became a really big uh, part of what we do today is actually programs that help children and families right here in the United States. I remember I've done a few events, uh, rice and lentil casseroles, uh, sending those out. Uh, now it is, it, you guys have created a portal um, where families can, people can donate and send it to p- families who, who need healthy food. Uh, tell us about this portal and, and the, the new grant and what that will ultimately provide. Right. Well, we're really excited about it. So we've got a program called Full Cart, which can mm-hmm. be accessed at fullcart.org. And it's a grocery delivery program that's available nationwide. So somebody from Alaska to Miami, uh, Maine, San Diego, all across the United States, people can go online and they can order a box of groceries. There's no charge at all for the groceries. They pay a little bit for the shipping, so a a reduced cost for the shipping to get the box of groceries right to their front door. But what it does is it gives families an opportunity to have groceries for pennies on the dollar compared to other options. So it's really addressing the high cost of living, which is really the big driver of hunger in America. Mm. And then for people who really need just emergency situation assistance, like a loss of a job or after a hurricane or or some type of event where these need help in an emergency there's actually an opportunity through the good deeds portal where a donor can go on and say hey I'd like to help sponsor the cost of shipping for this family and they can read about the family story why they're in need of emergency assistance and they can select families to help and then donate to cover the cost of that shipping the goal is 12 million kids uh, the it's crazy when you think about the number of children and the number of families who are insecure food they deal with food insecurity can you explain just the definition of food insecurity how someone is food insecure yeah so really what it stems from is we have the uh, housing affordability rising cost of living that's a major challenge for us here in central mm-hmm. florida of course um, health care costs food costs education costs student loans and combined with sort of wages that are kind of stagnant in households over Mm -hmm. the last 15 years, Mm -hmm. it means there's actually more families today who are waking up and they're not sure how they're gonna put food on the table. And that's really the classic definition is, you know, if you're at any time during the year, if you're faced with a situation where you're not sure how you're gonna provide for your family, you're not sure how you're gonna put food on the table, if you don't have consistent and steady access to the actual nutritional value that you need Mm -hmm. for your family, then that's food insecurity. So Florida and Central Florida in particular deals with affordable housing and we are uh, at the bottom of the list when it comes to affordable housing. Is that why when it comes to food insecurity, instead of the one in seven number, which is nationwide, one in four children, 25% of children in Central Florida are are going to school hungry and and trying to study and, and, and develop without the proper nutrition? Yeah, and you know, it really is a tragedy because mm-hmm. it, it puts children in Central Florida 
it puts them behind their peers throughout the country because you can't when you're when you're a child, especially in that kindergarten through eighth grade range, if you're not getting the nutrition that you need at home for dinner or on weekends, uh, it, you know it, you cannot develop the body physically cannot develop the way that it should with the right nutrition, mm -hmm. and then the stress and anxiety and shame that exists in those households, mm -hmm. all of that weighs on people from a psych psychological standpoint mm -hmm. too, and so uh, it puts children in our community behind their peers all across the U.S. So we've got to do something about that. Right. Uh, we, when we think of, of hunger, I, I think that recently, and as we've seen with affordable housing and, and things like that, it, it the talk is really starting to ramp up. And I think that's what's needed, right? I, I think that people just assume hunger of third world countries, and that is not the case. Yeah, and hunger definitely certainly looks different all over the world, sure. right? So a South Sudanese refugee in northern Uganda has right. a different struggle with hunger. But mm -hmm. um, here in the United States, what we find is often people struggle silently with hunger, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when we've surveyed the people that we uh, serve through our grocery program, we ask them questions about how did they uh, solve their food insecure meals before our program. And what we find is a very large percentage of them, almost 50%, said that they would just skip meals, right? Right? Mm -hmm. And so that means there's kids in our community whose parents are making a decision to just skip the meal and to not feed their children at mm -hmm. all during that meal. And because they know maybe they're going to get breakfast the next day at school or they'll get lunch at school and the parents are kind of just making that decision. And mm -hmm. it, it's not the kid's fault, right? Mm -hmm. The kids don't have any say in that. And for us, a lot of that comes down to here in Central Florida, it really is housing affordability, mm -hmm. right? And, um, you know, when we first started doing this, you know, trying to create a hunger-free world, we were very focused on the food, but as we learn more and more of the root causes, you know, mm -hmm. housing affordability is such a huge issue because if people are spending such a large percentage of their income on housing, then it means they have to sacrifice somewhere in their budget. Exactly. And it's usually food. That's what mm -hmm. gets missed. And then f food deserts, uh, we have several in central Florida. Can you explain to our viewers who may be unaware what a food desert is? And, um, and I think it's just right along the same lines as the affordable housing where, you know, rent prices might be too high for a place to open up shop and, and they can't afford it. And so people are dealing with uh, a food that is not nutritional. Yeah, so um, they're basically a food desert is a community where there's a certain distance. The USDA kind of sets the guidelines, mm -hmm. but there's a certain distance between where that home is and the closest grocery store. Mm -hmm. And there's rural food deserts that kind of have an expanded definition, and then there's urban food deserts. Here in Central Florida, we have a lot of urban food deserts. And ultimately, what that means really is you have a lot of population really in an area, but you know it doesn't justify sort of the economics of mm -hmm. putting a traditional grocery store into that community. And so really then it means the only option for people to shop in their community for groceries are more expensive options mm -hmm. than grocery stores, typically options where uh, there's a lot of less nutritious food mm -hmm. available, and then there's a lot of fast food. There's usually about three times the number of fast food restaurants uh, in a community that's a food desert versus mm -hmm. a community that's not a food desert. And so there's all kinds of public health issues that come from that as well. And you know that costs everybody, right? Mm -hmm. So um, we've got to care about all of our community. Uh, we've got to make sure that every part of our community is prospering all throughout Central Florida. And after Hurricane Dorian devastated the Bahamas, feeding children everywhere reacted in a big way. We'll discuss that and much more right after this. Keep it here. This is the weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. Welcome back. Nationally, one in seven children are considered food insecure, but here in Central Florida, the rate is closer to one in four. Charities like Longwood based Feeding Children Everywhere do what they can to provide for families who struggle to afford healthy meals. The nonprofit CEO, Dave Green, is back now as we continue our discussion on this pressing issue. Is that why we're seeing um, quite a number of farmers markets really try to uh, set up shop and, and sell agriculture that is grown near where these food deserts are and, and trying to sell fresh fruit and fresh veggies to families at a, at a good price? 
Yeah, so the city of Orlando has actually been an incredible leader on this mm. to um, support and promote programs that grow hyper-local or micro-farmed mm -hmm. uh, produce, and then also supporting the farmer's markets throughout Central Florida, but that's a huge component of what we need in our food system. Mm -hmm. And of course, the USDA gives double the benefits, right? So when someone with SNAP benefits, the old food stamp program, when they utilize their SNAP benefits at one of those farmer's markets, mm -hmm. there's a two for one, right? So every, every dollar of SNAP benefits they utilize, they'll actually get $2 worth of produce mm -hmm. to really encourage healthy eating. Mm -hmm. uh, if not for charities like your charity, um, would this just get out of control and and what could ultimately be uh, down the pike when it comes to families who need healthy food but there are no options and if not for companies like yours would have to go to those bad options? Yeah, so um, really as a society we've got to innovate and help create systems that make food more accessible and more affordable. Mm -hmm. We've got to do the same thing in housing and education and right. healthcare. And the good news is there are leaders across all of those sectors that are really focused on that. I know there are leaders right here in Central Florida who are really putting a lot of energy into affordable housing and, mm -hmm. and really beyond affordable housing is just making housing affordable for right. most of Central Florida. Mm -hmm. I think in the old days, affordable housing meant like, you know, really, really low income. But the truth is, that, you know, for middle class families in Central Florida today, it's it's hard to find affordable housing as mm -hmm. well. And so uh, I think that definition is expanding and we're finding the definition of the face of who's hungry in America mm -hmm. has expanded as well because, you know, as I travel the country, I meet people who are in really even some of the upper middle class, but their cost of living in places like San Francisco or others mm -hmm. has gotten so high mm -hmm. that for the first time, they're not sure how they're gonna feed their family. And so mm -hmm. we've gotta make sure that our leaders here in Central Florida and the nonprofit organizations and corporations and the community, everybody's collaborating collaborating mm -hmm. together to solve these issues. Someone might be watching this and say, hey, I'd like to get involved. I wanna help out. What, what would your message be to them? Yeah, so um, one person really can make a difference. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. And uh, they can volunteer, they can serve at a project at our, our Longwood facility. Mm -hmm. uh, they can go right online to feedingchildreneverywhere.com to sign up. Uh, they can go to the fullcart.org website and they can sponsor the shipping costs through the Good Deeds portal mm -hmm. for families in, in need of emergency assistance. Uh, or they can just you know take up the flag right in their own community, right in their neighborhood and look for ways to make their neighborhood better, whether mm -hmm. that's you know creating a, a micro farm in their own community or in their own yard, right? Yeah. And uh, generate produce that they can donate to the food pantries mm -hmm. and food banks and, and people in the community. But the key is that uh, one person really can make a difference and it's just about taking action. Mm -hmm. We have the holidays coming up as well. And, and I know that that is a, a major focus and, and just it, it's family tradition to, to have adequate turkey and, and uh, what have you. But um, it, is this going to be all ready to go by the holidays so so someone who um, struggles to afford food uh, can can get the the right stuff yeah so we're very fortunate to have just received a million dollar grant mm -hmm. from the Cigna Foundation and that's helping us to put in all the infrastructure and capacity and mm -hmm. even technology to be able to serve families at scale across the country including right here in Central Florida mm -hmm. and so um, through the Good Deeds portal there's you can go on right now even and and select families in Central mm -hmm. Florida that you'd like to help mm -hmm. and uh, through other partnerships we have through even with the United Way um, the United Way does a lot to help families families in Central Florida during this time. And so we're doing a lot to kind of support and help them. And, you know, really that collaboration between nonprofits and again, you know, the businesses in our community and, and government and, and individuals really is what it takes to address that. So the portal, it, it seems like it's a lot like uh, HelloFresh or something along those lines where people can um, order their meals. It, it gets delivered right to their doorstep um, at a fee every month or whatever. This is just that minus the fee. Yeah, right, it's, it's at a fraction of It's such of the a cost. nice, um, it's, I mean, it's such a great way, and, and just one less thing to worry about for a family who's trying to juggle everything going on. Food pantries at schools, we know those serve their purpose, but it's not the same, yeah. right? Yeah, and, and that's part of it for us is we're also trying to restore dignity to the process, right? right? So, you know, we're at the lowest unemployment rate we've been at in over 50 years mm -hmm. in our country. So you would kind of think that hunger is going away, but the reality is because of cost of living, it's actually getting worse for a certain segment of our population. Mm -hmm. And so for us, you know, 
for them to have to take off paid time off from work on a Thursday afternoon mm -hmm. to go out to a food pantry, it's not always realistic, right? And so for a, a mom to be able to come home from work uh, and go online and order the groceries that mm -hmm. her family needs, pay a little bit of money towards the shipping, and then two days later that box of groceries shows up at mm -hmm. the front door, um, you know, that that's the way that we can address hunger here in America. And it's because the only way that we're really ever going to end hunger in America mm -hmm. is when the people can actually source their own groceries mm -hmm. on their own, right? And so yeah. that's what this is all about. And so many people work two jobs, and yeah. so that uh, food is the last thing on their mind when they're, when they're going about their day. Yeah. I, I understand you guys had some... Um, help with the Bahamas as well, with the relief um, yeah. from Hurricane Dorian. Um, how's that going? Is that still ongoing? Yeah, so uh, it is still ongoing. Uh, we have a lot of corporate partners that around the country even that are packaging meals even still today to be able to get to the Bahamas. 9-11 mm -hmm. uh, day of service is a, a, a great day for our organization to take this day that was a tragedy and turn it into this amazing day of service. Mm -hmm. uh, that day alone generated hundreds of thousands of meals uh, that are on their way to the Bahamas. And so, um, you know, Central Florida, of course, the volunteerism in Central Florida was amazing. People just really stepped up to mm -hmm. help and again it was individuals and businesses and you know we were getting calls from pilots that said hey I've still got room on a plane can I come pick up some food and uh, really it was wonderful to see how Central Florida responded. Central Florida always responds and it, it is it, it's not the case everywhere around the United States and, and we're lucky to live here. Uh, before you go I, I just want to ask you just uh, as the CEO uh, of a charity um, that does this great work uh, the pride that must bring you and uh, going to work every day must be um, a joy. Well, it is very rewarding. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are actually coming up on a huge milestone for our organization. Uh, we're in the next you know, few months, we're actually gonna end up working with our one millionth volunteer, wow. right? So a million volunteers over about a 10 year period. Mm -hmm. And you know that is something to definitely celebrate um, because it's really about the goodness that exists in people's hearts all throughout mm -hmm. this community, really all throughout the United States. Uh, to step up and to you know give up some of their own time mm -hmm. to try to make the world a better place. And for me, that's the thing that is the most inspiring and encouraging is mm -hmm. just to see uh, the sacrifice and commitment of those million volunteers that mm -hmm. we'll have worked with here in the coming months. We've seen how um, the charity has developed in the last 10 years. What is the next 10 years? What do the next 10 years look like in your eyes? What do you envision? Well, our, our first goal is to get the grocery delivery program to get mm -hmm. that up to 5 million grocery packages a month, right? Wow. So we feel like once we're doing that, then people who really needed help with extending their grocery budget, they're able to get the help that they need. Mm -hmm. um, during that same time, we're also looking at long-term strategies in some of the countries where we work, like Uganda. Uh, we've got a farming operation underway there now to create jobs for South Sudanese refugees and to grow food and, and create kind of the basics of an agrarian economy in the mm -hmm. refugee settlements. But I think we'll expand some of the work that we're doing here in the United States to really try to take what we learn here and, and grow that in other parts of the world. They really do great work. My thanks to Dave Green for coming by this week. For more information on the topics that we talked about and how you can get involved with feeding children everywhere, just head to clickorlando.com weekly. I'm Justin Warmoth. Have a great Sunday.